Wouldn't it be nice if you could run your CI jobs locally? Well, now you can, at least for GitHub Actions. Let me show you. Hey, Vlad here from devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. Now, I don't know about you, but often I am the one who sets up CI at work. And when I do, I often wish to be able to run it locally. Before we even get into this video, I admit that most people on your team probably don't have a strong desire to do that. But as it is often the case in life, most likely they just need to see it once to have this, oh, this is actually a useful moment. There are many reasons for running CI locally. For instance, your dev machine is probably way more powerful than the CI server. Also, even though you could simply run another clean compile, your environment is probably different from CI, even if you're running Nix development shells, which I already have a video about that you might want to check out. Another reason might be the fact that you're on a Mac and CI servers typically run Linux often Ubuntu. Another common thing, at least in the Scala community, is to convert your warnings into errors, but only on CI. Most likely you compile your code natively, but CI often runs in virtual machines or at least Docker, and believe it or not, there are significant differences sometimes. You might be introducing new secrets that are stored in git ignored files and CI doesn't have them or vice versa. There are many more reasons, but you get the idea. The point is that there is a gap between your environment and what's happening on CI. And the tool that we're going to see today reduces this gap. It doesn't close it, of course, but it does get you a step closer to reproducibility. And I'll tell you all about it right after the message from our sponsor, scalajobs.com and rustjobs.dev. Be sure to check out the links in the description if you're looking for a job. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on Patreon. Your contributions go right back into this channel. They allow me to pay for a video editor who frees some of my time, which I then again choose to spend with you, whether it's doing live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. All right, now over the course of my career, I've been exposed to multiple CI systems and I have yet to pick a favorite. For now, everyone seems to have jumped on the GitHub Actions bag and on the tool that we're going to demo today knows how to evaluate your GitHub Actions workloads, substitute VMs for Docker images, secrets for environment variables, and so on. At the end of the day, it can run CI locally. It's called ACT. The link is down in the description and you can install it in a bunch of different ways. It even works on Windows. If you're a Nix user, as am I, you'll be happy to know that it's published to Nix packages and because it doesn't need to run any daemons, you can even have it part of your development shells. You still need Docker though, so there's that. It was created by an AWS guy, Casey Lee, in early 2019, and since then, it has gathered almost 35,000 GitHub stars. All right, now, assuming that you have ACT installed and Docker running, the first time you simply run ACT, it will notice that you don't have a configuration file. You need a configuration file, which it will generate, because you need to choose which Docker image to map to the VM that is described in your workflow file. Now, as most CIs, GitHub Actions runs on VMs, and ACT needs to know which Docker image to replace the VMs with. They come in three different sizes, and I recommend that you start with the smallest one, and only if it doesn't work, you bump it up and see if it gets you where you're going. Please be aware that the largest one is truly gigantic. We're talking 15 gigs here. I'm happy that the middle one worked for my needs. You can also specify the substitution manually by using the hyphen P or the hyphen hyphen platform flags instead of having the configuration file. Now, I only recently discovered this tool and I didn't feel like setting up toy playgrounds. I really wanted to see if I could use it for CI at work. And, you know, with a little bit of experimentation, I'm happy to report that I got it working and I have permission to show it to you. So here we go. Now, I recently started to work for a new client and we have a relatively small web app and we set up some basic CI for it. We use Nix development shells and so our CI just needs to get the latest Ubuntu, which is currently 22.04, install Nix, load our shell, run some tests, and apart from some caching here and there, that's pretty much it. An interesting fact to point out is that one of the tools that our Nix dev shell brings is Just, which is a command runner similar to Make. So instead of having a folder full of bash scripts that we share across the team, we just have this file called just file that contains a bunch of just recipes. The effect of this is that as long as the people on our team have Nix installed and Docker running, they can literally type just run CI locally and it will use act to, well, run CI locally. All right, now let me finally show it to you. As in most of my videos, I'm on Windows and I'm using WSL. This is an Ubuntu 2004 uh, distribution and I'm using West term, a very cool uh, terminal. I just made a video about it. You might want to check it out. So as you can see, I'm in the repo and I made only one tiny change to our workflow. I removed this whole clean part because I want to demo it too. And so I want it to run uh, more quickly. There's a way to reuse the Docker container. And this is pretty much how you do caching when you run CI locally. Okay. So I'm literally going to type just run CI locally. And while it runs, I'm uh, going to show you a couple of files. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is 
uh, I'm going to do just show and it's going to show us the uh, run CI locally recipe. And I'm going to pipe it into bat and I'm going to tell it that the language for syntax highlighting is going to be bash. And I'm going to ask it to use the uh, plain way of demonstrating the file. So a couple of things that I did are uh, optional. So the first uh, thing that I did is I'm creating a variable with the image, right? So this is the middle image from um, Act's uh, website. In fact, if we actually go here and we're going to search for runners. So as you can see over here, uh, it pretty much has, um, I think it only has uh, Ubuntu runners. Um, yeah, so Windows and Mac uh, based platforms are currently unsupported. Okay, so uh, basically uh, we're using Ubuntu 22.04 uh, in our workflow, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And then you pretty much have a choice between these three, right? So you either go with Node, um, you go with Ubuntu Act 22.04, which is the one that worked for me. Uh, this one, it says that it's unavailable, but if you run this one, it just happens to be the latest, which is the 22.04. This is the one that is like 15, uh, 15 gigs large, okay? So I'm pretty much using uh, this one and I'm actually doing uh, Docker image pull myself right so act would actually do this for me but the thing is that the first time it's going to run it um it's it's not going to display anything so uh, the people on my team would need to like wait until it actually um, downloads it now there is a way to uh pass a hyphen v flag to act which would enable the uh verbose output but i don't want to do this because it's actually going to enable the verbose output for everything and i, I just wanted to um I just want to see the image being downloaded. And the second time it's going to run, uh, which I can show it to you over here, right? So pretty much stars was just saying, come on, go up um, like this, right? So it just takes another second. So you technically you don't need to pull it yourself. And there is a limitation in Nix Flakes due to which we decided that it's better to have our Nix Flake live outside of the repo, okay? And the problem is that it lives in our organization and it's a private repo. And so our CI needs to have access to it somehow. And we solve this problem by using SSH keys. Uh, the GitHub has a thing called deploy keys. And so the public key lives where the Nix Flake lives and the private key is just an environment variable in the repo that needs to use it, right? For CI to use it. We use a tool called Doppler, which is a secrets manager that I have a love-hate relationship with. On one hand, it's a great product. On the other hand, it's expensive. And also they were supposed to sponsor a couple of videos, but at some point they stopped replying to my uh, email messages, which is somewhat of a dick move. So this line over here gets this key from Doppler and I'm running act reuse, reuse me, meaning, you know, don't destroy the Docker container once, you, once you're done. I'm specifying the platform manually because I don't want it to interactively uh, ask the people on my team which uh, image to choose. So I'm hard coding the image over here and I'm passing the secret, which is a Nix Flake uh, private SSH key, which is how it is called in my workflow. And over here, I'm doing a bunch of dark magic in bash because um you know i needed to uh deal with the with the new lines right because the ssh private key you know it has multiple lines and so i need to pass it in such a way that you know that bash would be happy okay uh let me actually show you the uh the workflow which is over here there's nothing nothing special about it it's a very very simple workflow right so uh when we pull or when we when we push to uh main develop or uh release branches so we're doing we're doing git flow right download this ubuntu 22.4 vm which is exactly why uh we had this mapping over there right so over here uh we said that you know when when our workflow is going to use ubuntu 22.4 which is over here uh substituted with um this image Okay, and then uh, what do we do? We're setting up some stuff for uh, some cache for Nix. Uh, we're actually installing Nix. Um, this is again some Nix cache stuff, uh, some more Nix cache stuff, and this is where we where we add um, the SSH agent, right? So we add uh, you know this Nix flake uh, private SSH key, which is over here. And uh, yeah, we cache some SPT stuff. This is mostly a Scala channel, by the way, and our build tool is SPT. And yeah, and in the end, again, we're doing this SSH thing and then we do Nix develop. So we're getting this flake from uh, from this remote repository. Inside of it, there is a CI dev shell and we're running the command SPT test. Like usually we would run, uh, you know, we would run, you know, the, the clean update compile uh, thing. But, you know, because this is a demonstration, I just wanted to um, to make it a little bit quicker. OK, so what we're going to do now is, well, actually, let me run it again. Uh, because it's, you know, it's relatively quickly. It takes about like 24 seconds when I'm not recording. Now that I am recording, I'm on a four-year-old laptop, so it's going to take like around 40, uh, 40 seconds, okay? So as you can see, it just, you know, starts by getting this image. Um, this is the output of the of the installation of Nix. Um, some outputs of, uh, of cache and stuff. This is like where it adds the key, so now it's downloading our, our flake. Uh, now it gets into SBT and because I removed this clean clean flag, it understood that everything is already compiled. So it ran the tests. There are actually no tests right now. I removed them for this demonstration. And uh, there we go. So um, 
And these, uh, let me actually scroll up again, just to explain the output a little bit. So we're doing a git pull, uh, we're starting a job. Um, the workflow is called CI, uh, the job is called uh, test. The stars are the steps. Uh, this is obviously Docker stuff. This is like Git clone stuff. Uh, this is where I didn't understand what the task was about uh, because it's like, a, you know, installing Nix. So it's like an ex external uh, thing that it has um, no idea what it is. Therefore, we, we see a question mark. By the way, if on your end, the uh, emojis don't look properly, I uh, highly recommend that you check out this terminal. It's called uh, West Term, and I just made a video about it. Okay. So at the end, like some caching, caching, caching. Uh, but uh, here it actually, you know, it, it does the, the last step, which is, you know, um, run main SPT compile and test. Okay. And there we go. This is pretty much it. Uh, if we were to go to, um, to the website, um, there's a bunch of other flags that you can uh, scroll down, uh, look in, in your end. Like for example, one of the things that you might be interested in is, uh, you know, binding a working directory to a container rather than uh, copy it over. Um, yeah, so you can pass secrets, you can pass environment variables, which is not exactly the same thing. You can target like individual jobs, you can trigger different events. Uh, I didn't need any of that because, you know, our, our CI is pretty simple. And that's all I got for you today. A nice little demo. Let me know in the comments below if you use this tool before and if you like it. Cool, I hope you enjoyed this one. Check out the previous one and i see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from DevInsideYou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to contribute to tech education, please consider doing so on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. And let's watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.